I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anshuman Gupta from Invest Tech Capital Services. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you, moderator, and good evening to everyone. On behalf of Invest Tech Capital, I welcome you all for Tattva Chintan Pharma Chem's Q4 and full year FR22 earnings call. Today, we have senior management team from Tattva, represented by Mr. Chintan Shah, Managing Director, and Mr. Ashok Bhotra, CFO. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Dinesh from Dr. Chintan. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Anshuman. Good afternoon, everyone. We are pleased to welcome you all to our Q4 Financial Year 22 earning call. Please note that a copy of our disclosures is available on the investor section on our website as well as on the stock exchanges. Please do note that anything said on this call which reflects our outlook towards the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that company faces in terms of uncertainty. With that, I would like to hand over the floor to our MD, Mr. Chintan Shah, for his opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Good evening to everyone who are present on our fourth quarter and year-ending earnings call. A warm welcome and thank you for joining us. I trust everyone is doing well. With our year end results, coincidentally, Tokyo Jinkan is also celebrating its birthday today. 26th April 1996 was the day of inauguration of Tokyo Jinkan's first plant at Ampleshwar. Today we have completed 26 years. I am taking this opportunity to thank the team of Tokyo Jinkan who have contributed to its success and to also, also to all its stakeholders. For Tattva Chintan, FY21-22 has ended with lots of good memories and proud achievements. First time, we crossed the revenue mark of 400 crores. Again, for the first time, we crossed a profit before tax of more than 100 crores. Also, our exports revenue crossed the mark of rupees 300 crores for the first time. And in fact, our export revenue of FY22 has exceeded the total revenue of FY21. Last and most uh, memorable was successfully getting listed on Indian stock exchanges. So a big congratulations to all for making this as one of the most memorable year in the budget history. As you are aware, we are an integrated niche specialty chemical company working in four product categories. We are leading manufacturers of waste transfer catalysts with capabilities to offer the largest basket of PTC products. These products are used as catalysts in manufacturing of pharma APIs, flavor fragrances, agrochemicals, etc. PTC comprised 23% of revenues during FY22. We have seen a revenue growth of nearly 20% year on year basis. We continue to maintain our leadership position in this area. During the past year, we got commercial approval from two well-known MNC customers in pharma and agrospace each, who will start commercial usage from current year. We expect the revenues for PTC segment to grow at a historical pace. Under our second category, we manufacture structural directing agents, SDAs, which are key building blocks for manufacturing high-precision GLI which finds application in automotive emission control, petrochemicals, continuous flow chemistries, etc. We have seen a very strong growth of 87% year-on-year in this segment. Large part of our SBA demand currently is coming from auto emission control application. I have explained earlier that the ongoing shortage of semiconductor chips availability is leading to a subdued demand of SDAs. This is reflected in mutated revenue growth uh, of this seg segment during quarter 4 FY22. The ongoing political crisis has further impacted the semiconductor availability, leading into still further postponement of demands of SDAs into auto emission control area. We expect Q1 and Q2 of FY23 will see a weaker demand in SDAs. Though the underlying demand of SDAs continues to remain very strong. We expect strong demand revival upon improvement of semiconductor chip availability. Despite subdued demands for the next two quarters, we expect to maintain the business with minor impacts in this segment. Despite of the short-term challenges, 
we are very confident of strong SBA demand growth over next few years, and SBA would continue to be our growth driver for few years. Now, talking on the brighter aspects of SBA business, during the past year, we have got formal approval from two large customers. Commercial business with one of these customers has, uh, has been negotiated, and supply is to begin from Q2. Commercial business with the second customer is under discussion and expected to begin supply from January of 23. Also, we are undergoing approval process with yet another important customer for which we expect to finish the plant trials within 2022. Under our third category, we manufacture electrolyte salts which are used in supercapacitor batteries which find application in automobile, electronics, and for energy storage devices. During FY22, this product category comprised 1.3% of our total revenue, and in absolute numbers, revenue grew by more than 87% year-on-year basis. During current year, we got formal approval from a new customer for energy storage device application. And we have been already awarded commercial supply opportunity for 2022. We are also into pilot scale approval with one new customer, and we have been given opportunity to begin initial approval process with yet another customer. Both new opportunities are coming from the new products developed as the search engine in this application area during the last financial year. We are seeing a steady rise in applications getting into commercializations using supercapacitor batteries and energy storage devices. The application of supercaps in EV and automobile application is gaining traction. Also, the application of energy storage devices in renewable energy storage systems is getting into commercialization. We expect multi multifold growth in this segment and a strong application growth is expected over the coming years. Under the fourth category, PASC, we manufacture pharma and agro-intermediates and specialty chemicals products. Under this segment, we have seen a year-on-year -year growth of 12% and revenues have crossed to 100 crores, contributing 23.6% to the revenue. Under this segment, one of the products has got into full-scale commercialization and should start getting a good volume growth. One more product, which was under approval since 2020, has now been fully approved by the customer and we are beginning actual commercial supply from Q2. We shall see a ramp up of demand in this product over the next two years. Both these above products involve PTC technologies in production. One more product which I already talked about earlier, we have completed development work and should be submitting our samples within a few weeks. This product involves our zeolite catalyst-based continuous flow chemistry application to achieve superior quality. We are simultaneously working on pilot setup of this product as well. Commercial sub supply should take about 18 months time to materialize. We informed earlier about monogline. Monogline continuous flow development work is completed. Equipment designing is completed for pilot scale. And now we are finalizing the vendor for equipment supply. Plant scale commercialization by this new technique would happen in next financial year. Besides these ongoing efforts, we have developed and submitted our plant scale sample for a new product in the area of metal extractions. We expect the commercial supply to start towards Q4. We are progressing steadily with our development of continuous flow application in two products. We have progressed very well with development of a solvent into EV battery application area using continuous flow chemistry. We have been recently granted opportunities to develop two more products in agrospace, which involves continuous flow chemistry. We expect a strong growth under PASC product category over the next year, and we are also focusing strongly in development of various products under this category using specialized technologies to ensure continuity of growth. I am pleased to share that our development team has success successfully run pilot scale trials of a product in flame retardant category. We would undertake the full scale plant trials from June 
post installation of the necessary infrastructure at the head as is your plan. We are beginning with one product and gradually intend to develop a portfolio of multiple products under this category. This is a large product segment wherein we are focusing on high purity and niche application area customers. We shall begin approval of our product with customers from June. We intend to henceforth report this as a separate product category. Using our electrolysis technology, we are seeing a good progress towards achieving ultra high purity levels of products having application into semiconductors and electronic space. We have been offered an opportunity by a large MNC customer to take us into approval process with these high purity substances. This is an extremely high entry barrier area. With the current level of progress in development, we are very confident of meeting with the stringent quality requirements in this product. Commercialization can take about 18 to 24 months after the initial sample approval. One successful we would be the only Indian company in this segment and also among the select few companies globally. Towards our effort of optimizing green chemistry concept, we have taken a task to reduce usage of solvents at the plant. In one of our large products, we are ending up with a mix of solvents which are difficult to separate. Hence, we are unable to reuse the solvent. Our development team has come up with a unique and brilliant solution, enabling us to reuse the solvent. We have recently implemented this technique commercially in our Dahej SEZ plant. This will enable us to reuse the solvent to the tune of few hundred metric tons per annum. Also in similar direction, yet in another product, we are successful on lab scale to eliminate, to completely eliminate the use of solvent and instead make an equally pure product in water solution form directly. We are currently discussing with the customer to take up the product for requalification due to a major process change. If the customer approves the change, we will be able to further reduce solvent consumption by several hundred metric tons. I am immensely pleased to inform you that on Together for Sustainability platform, we have drastically improved our audit score year on year basis from 54% to 78% last year and this year we have achieved 87%. This is a matter of pride for Petro Chintan and it also demonstrates our genuine efforts in moving towards sustainable solutions. During the fourth quarter, India was facing the third wave which spread profusely but was not as damaging as the previous COVID waves. Its effect on our business has not been much However, the spread of Omicron variant and subsequent lockdowns in China and Winter Olympics had an impact on shipping, logistics and availability of certain raw materials. Fortunately, we have anticipated this challenge well in time, thereby stopped enough raw materials during the end of Q3, which helped us to manage our production in a smooth fashion and adhere to customer demands on a timely basis. <coughs> Considering the escalated raw material prices even in the fourth quarter, we are thankful to our few customers who have mostly absorbed the increasing cost of freight and raw materials in certain cases, which has ensured that we could operate with decent margins during the quarter. The freight cost rose from 3.7% to 7.6% of revenue year on year basis. Fuel cost increased from 3% to 6.2% of revenue year on year basis. And packaging cost increased from 1.7 to 3.1% of revenue year on year basis. Despite of these challenges, we were able to achieve an EBITDA of 23% in Q4 and 27% in the whole of FY22. I would like to highlight here that the impact in demand in one product category is offset by subsequent demand in another product category, as our products found application in varied end industries across geographies. We continue to see good synergies between our products as we are seeing our clients consuming our products by the strength of all the good innovations and the great support we have delivered to them over the years. Also, please note that SBA is the largest contributor of our EBITDA margins 
followed by PASC and electrolyte salts, and eventually followed by flame retardants and PTCs. So, wedding demand in each product category will have its impact on the margins for the particular product. For the upcoming year, with new customers additions and new products getting into commercialization, new product category of flame retardants being introduced, we will continue to grow at a good rate. Despite the change in product mix that we envisage for next year, we shall be able to maintain our EBITDA margins within our historic range for the full year. Our approach of being an integrated manufacturer, producing niche specialty chemicals, having leadership position across product categories, diversified geographically with 79% exports as on FY22, focus on green chemistry by using cutting-edge technology, in-house R&D facility with 24 employees including 10 senior level qualified scientists, has helped us steadily grow our presence and more importantly, help grow the customer's confidence in the future. Despite the turbulent macroeconomic situation of COVID lockdowns and geopolitical tensions globally, the ongoing capacity expansion of setting up additional facilities at our Zahed SEZ and expanding our R&D capabilities at Vodogra from the IPO process is running as per schedule and we target to commission the facility by December of 2022. The sound ramp up continues with total workforce strength of 471. During the fiscal, we added 35 permanent employees which includes appointment of CTO, Chief Technical Officer. I want to take a moment and recognize and thank our employees for their unwavering commitment and hard work all through the year. With this, I conclude my remarks and now I would like to hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Ashok Botra, to take us through the financial performance. Ashok. Okay. Thank you, sir, and good evening, everyone. I begin by summarizing financial highlights for the year gone by. During the full year, FY22, revenue from operations was at 4,336 4, million versus 3,004 million in FY21. That is growth of 44% on YOY basis, backed by increased capacity utilization and demand. EBITDA was at uh, 1,171 million versus 716 million in FY21. That is growth of 64% on YOY basis. Net profit was 959 million versus 523 million in FY21. That is growth of 83% on YOY basis. EBITDA margin was at 27% in FY22 versus 24% in FY21 on account of better product mix with increased sale of SDA, which is a high margin equity product category. Fat margin was at 22% in FY22 versus 17% in FY21. For the full year, PTC consumed 23% of the revenue, SDA was at 52%. Lactulose side was at 1.3% and PSC 24%. During the year, exports stood at 3,405 million, surpassing the entire year revenue of FY21. Exports were made to 25, more than 25 countries, contributing around 80% of the revenue. For this part, during Q4 FY22, revenue from operations stood at 985 million. As already explained by Sintan sir in his comment, we saw a 9% decline in revenue Q on Q basis due to subdued demand of SDA during the quarter on account of semiconductor chip shortage. EBITDA was at 223 million and EBITDA margin was at 23%. During the quarter, trade uh, prices increased by 2.3% as a percentage of sale and packing expenses increased by 0.8% resulting in lower EBITDA margin. PET was at 175 million and PET margin is at 18%. During the fourth quarter, PTC contributed 31% of the revenue, SDA 40%, electrolyte serve 2.3%, rest coming from PASC. During the quarter, our export contributed around 74% of the revenue. Out of our net IPO proceed of 2,072.81 million, 641.97 million have been utilized and on, as on 31st March 22, our balance sheet remains strong with cash and cash equivalent, including bank balance and FD for FY22 was at 
1,770 million. The installed reactor capacity was at uh, 294 kL and installed SME line at 27% with a capacity utilization of 90% and 64% respectively during February 22. That concludes my update on financial and now we open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star then one. The first question is from Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Chintan Bhai, for taking my question. Um, few Sorry. questions from my side. Uh, first on the SDA, now we said that Q4 was weak, even Q3 was weak. Now we are talking of Q1 being Q2 and Q1 and Q2 being weak, weak for us. Uh, how does the full year look like? Uh, can we do uh, the SDA revenue in FI23 equivalent to FI22 or uh, we still believe that uh, for FI23 there will be a good growth over FI22 in SDA revenue? Uh, that's the first question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Basically, yeah, so basically what has happened is that demand, underlying demand still continues to remain strong. But everyone, because of these geopolitical issues that have recently erupted, that has caused an issue of a specific raw material required for a semiconductor. This is leading to a further decrease in availability of semiconductors for the time. So the orders are getting postponed. Demand continues to remain very robust, but only the uptake of demand is not happening. So as soon as the semiconductor availability smoothens out, which we expect to happen by August or September of this year. And we expect this demand to again come back. So this is going to be kind of a pent up demand that should come back because currently people are trying to consume their inventory pipelines and not trying to order more material as of now. With all this, we expect though Q1 is going to be really uh, low. Q2, we will see an improvement happening from those levels. And Q3, Q4, we should see a very strong demand coming back. So we expect more or less to maintain the revenues of SBA, what we have done in this year, more or less without much impact on the overall revenue of SBA, we should end the year coming financial year. So what we are telling that we will be at a flatish sale in FY23 versus FY23. Exactly, yes. Got it, got it. And, and are we prepared for that pent-up demand? Are we keeping that much of inventory uh, available with us to cater the pent-up demand? We don't have excess capacity at our end, right? So we still continue to produce the SDA and we are piling up on the inventory for that because we understand that when the demand comes back, this will come from multiple customers at the same time. So unless and until we have that inventory, we will not be able to cater those demands. So we have now indications from customers to begin certain supplies happening from August. But still, you know, because of this uncertainty of the semiconductor issue, uh, we are projecting that probably Q2 should also remain weak. But it, the things may change if the semiconductor availability changes accordingly. Got it, got it. Uh, from, from the new product pipeline, we just uh, highlighted so many of them. Uh, can you give us uh, the timeline for commercial production for all these products which we have planned? And what is the anticipated capacity in each of these products? Uh, the project we, uh, we are talking about is the frame rate project, then monoglime, then uh, our uh, PASP. Yeah, so see. Uh, the upcoming products, uh, the flame retardants, we are just starting commercial production. So this is a new range of products which we are about to introduce. And we will uh, start the production from mid-June. So we are expecting certain equipments to be installed at the plant, which we expect to happen in there. And we can start the commercial trials at plant, uh, plant scale commercial trials beginning. In terms of uh, the high purity uh, substances for the electronic and semiconductor activities. 
we expect two years to be a commercialization period to begin. Here, we will not have to invest anything major with because we already have an infrastructure. So, these products will be produced in using the electrodialysis technology. So, we have an enough capacity to take care of this uh, product. Except, we have to invest in, uh, in uh, what do you call is improving the air quality at the plant. So, controlling, controlling uh, conditions at the plant has to be installed, but this is not going to be a big expense in any case. In terms of uh, continuous flow chemistry, monoblime is what we expect to go first in terms of commercialization from next year on continuous flow chemistry. Uh, the solvent for the EV battery is we are almost through with the development part of it. Uh, we will get into pilot scale approvals from the customers probably within September or October of this year. And why this is happening? So any continuous flow application from pilots. Uh, in terms of intermediates, we have one intermediate which is now already going into full scale production demand from the customer, and again potential to double that demand over the next financial year. So that is already happening. The second product which we were waiting for an approval, now the formal approval is in place and we begin commercialization of that product from this year. Then we got to two new products which uh, we, we, two already existing products which we are doing on continuous flow chemistry. Still we are at the mid stage of development in terms of catalyst development. So I would say it's when happens from today. And the very important product which now we are ready with the process and about to submit the samples. Here we expect commercialization to begin in next 18 months time. Got it, got it. So, so what is the capex for all these projects over? Because if I hear it all, it is in next 24 months all these products will be commercialized. At least a large part of it will get commercialized. We are doing a capex of 150 crore in the unit 3 of the haze. I think that this does not include all that, right? So what is the additional capital? So all, these, all these chemistries would require one is your conventional facility, which we are already enhancing the capabilities. So that will take care of that. And the another thing we require is in terms of continuous flow chemistry. So this would uh, this would require an investment of about 75 crores over the next two, two years of time. Got it, got it. So basically, additionally, we will require 74 crore, 75 crore, and we should be through with most of the product commercial launches, right? Right, because major part of the expenditure is already being covered during this current expansion. So as in when you have the equipment design ready, and mm -hmm. those are the only missing points that you need to install. Otherwise, the rest of the infrastructure, including distillation columns or the reactor plants, everything will be in place by November. Got it. And, and that means if you are launching so many products simultaneously, we will need to plan for a new product sooner than earlier anticipated, right? Earlier we were talking of three to three and a half years for this plan to fully utilize. With so many product launches, are we planning to uh, know, develop the unit core uh, land earlier than what we anticipated uh, uh, earlier? That is what logically we will have. We will be compelled to do that. Probably over next 24 months is when we should start doing that capex. Maybe 18 to 24 months. Got it. Got it. And, and last question before I get back in the queue. Uh, can you explain the opportunity in the flame retardant? Uh, how big that could be? And uh, what is the visibility? And what is the capacity we are starting with now? Uh, in the mid-June and what is the kind of opportunity we are looking because we are calling this out as a separate segment. That means uh, we are thinking that this can become an independently very big uh, segment in its own. So what is the anticipation in the flame retardant side? Flame retardant is a huge market potential, so it runs into few billions of dollars. But we are specifically targeting very niche segments having applications as High purity flame retardants getting into more into the electronics area and also into certain uh, specialized uh, electrical applications. So this area, uh, we with our existing uh, capacities, we can probably hit up to our revenue 
uh, a large revenue and this is very scalable so this segment can itself become as good as a tatwa chintan's revenue as of today so this is the product category which can actually you know lead into large growth prospects and also with niche applications so there are flame retardants in the category which can uh, be sold at a regular quality with at a uh, reduced price whereas you have the same product going into a niche application area which can fetch your premium so this is the area where we are trying to focus in uh, position our products in so what is the current capacity we are starting with in film resort and right now and is it the same process as ttc and existing plant can be used no, for the same retardant the existing plant and the upcoming expansion can be used for making this same retardant uh, currently with our existing capacity before the expansion is completed technically we can produce about 80 to 100 metric tons a month and with the expansion uh, coming up online from december of this year then we can increase this capacity to about 4000 metric tons to 5000 metric tons per year so roughly about 400 to 450 metric tons a month got it got it and again dear your... excuse me this is the operator uh, sir i'm sorry to interrupt i will get back into you i will get sure, back sure sure perfect thank you sir ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please press star then one the next question is from jason sones from ashika stock broking please go ahead <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So, uh, so I just wanted to know. I mean, you had alluded before that you know Q2 is has been your best quarter. You know, in terms of an optimum utilization of the plant, and you will require more capex to you know bring in more revenues. So, just wanted to know how is the uh, capex which is slated for November, December. uh you know just an update on the capex as you know is it uh, on track so yeah i can get your question can you please repeat that yeah yeah sure sure so so i was telling you that uh, basically you had mentioned that q2 was your best quarter in this year you know and uh, you had mentioned that there is uh, there is very limited scope for you know out beating that revenue with, uh, in q2 that's because of uh, capacity constraints So just wanted to know, you know, this capex which you are planning, the 1.5 billion, uh, which is at the edge. What is the update on that, and uh, uh, when is it slated to go on stream? So this capex is running on time, on schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably not more than seven days of delay is what we expect. So still we can cover up that delay, and we expect to have this plant available for production from December of 22 this year. December of 22. Okay. and sure sir and uh, you in the previous participants question you did mention that now with the heightened geopolitical crisis you're looking at a flatish uh, you know fda sales for fy23 right so uh, yes. just wanted uh, just wanted some sense from you because you know fda has been our main product you know uh, main uh, main growth driver so uh, looking at you know even beyond say you know fy24 so do you look at growth being very back ended uh, from that perspective i mean uh, you said the underlying demand is very strong so how do you look at it and how do you look at the whole we still continue this segment to grow at the most rapid pace mm-hmm. uh, this is just a small hiccup that is on the way because of this uh, unavailability of the key raw materials for the auto industry once this is through then we again are back into a very high growth uh, situation with, with this particular product segment okay so we do do look at it uh, growing at a rapid pace ahead as well yes sure sure so uh, f- uh, yeah that completes the question from my end for right now i'll join back with you and and again currently Uh, you know this sba applications in auto india is mainly going into the bf6 or the euro 6 applications so going forward now we are going to transition into the bf7 area which will again push up the demand so this growth rate is to continue in a very robust way that is what we are expecting and we are very confident about that as well thank you the next question is from yasha from investec india please go ahead Hello, am I audible now? Yes, you are, sir. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, sir, my question was regarding a flame retardant, which is going to be a new segment. 
uh, can you some uh, throw some light uh, what will be the capacity and when you said that will be targeting niche application so can you be a bit more sir, specific uh, and how is this going to be used Flame retardants are basically added into polymers to give them flame retardant characteristics. So when in event of fire, it it holds up the fire and doesn't let it propagate. So that is the basic application of these flame retardants. And we are specifically targeting the area into the electronics application. So for example, just to give you an overview is when you have printed circuit boards. So these also are polymeric uh, uh, substances and these also involve high, high purity grade of uh, flame retardants applications. So this is the area where we are currently focusing on. There are other commercial applications, for example, in your roofing sheets uh, or even in your electric cables. So these are the applications where you don't require a very high purity grade of these flame retardants, but the electronic area is which commands for the high purity application area. So this is the key segment where we are focusing. So primarily we intend to sell this into the uh, East Asia market, you know, where you have a larger consumption of uh, this kind of, larger production of this uh, printed circuit boards kind of stuff. Got it, sir. And sir, what about the capacity, sir? Uh, are we eyeing, have we decided on the capacity? With, with our new plant, we will have a capacity of producing about 5,000 metric tons uh, of this uh, flame retard. But of course, this is not going to happen overnight. This product, this segment will also scale up gradually over the next two to two and a half years to reach that kind of level. Right. And if I'm not wrong, you mentioned the capacity will be commercialized within 18 months. So that will be no. by H2O. No, no, no. We are going to start commercial. To, we are starting the commercial plant trials from June, just this June, so two, two months down the line. And immediately after that, we will start commercial production. But when we start from our existing facility, we will be only able to produce about 80 metric tons per month. So nearly about, let us say, starting with a capacity of 900 to 1000 metric tons a year. And when we have the new plant available from December, this capacity automatically ramps up to about 5,000 metric tons per year. Got it, got it, got it. Sir. Uh, so one last question. So, sir, uh, in continuation due to the previous participant question, you said that the SDS growth will be flattish as compared to the previous year. So, uh, are we, will we still be in line to achieve about uh, more than upwards of 550 crores of revenue? And Yes, which segment will it be basically uh, coming from? I'm sorry, your voice is not coming very clearly. Can you please repeat it a little slowly? Uh, am I audible now? <coughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So, sir, uh, my only question was that you said that uh, the play, uh, FDA segment will be started as, com uh, as compared to FI23, for FI23, right? Uh, all, yeah. all I wanted to ask is, will we still be able to do uh, revenues in FI23 and upwards of 550 crores? Uh, and if yes, which segment will it be basically coming from? Uh, because since SBA is the highest segment, we just wanted to understand that. Right. So we expect the PTC segment to grow uh, at a normal pace. So we have been growing at about 20% in that area. The pharma segment where now the commercializations have begun on a full-scale commercialization. This is the area where we may expect about 30 to 50 percent of growth. Also, the electrolyte salt segment is where we will see a multiple growth, maybe four to five times of this year. So when is what we expect. And then we have this addition of uh, flame retardants, which will be a new revenue. So yes. Indicatively, we can still, uh, despite of flattish SBS, we, we uh, expect to grow at a significant rate, even in this financial year. Got it, sir, got it. If I may see one last question, sir. Just wanted to understand, sir, how did we manage to, uh, on quarter on quarter basis, how did we manage to increase our gross margin levels of, uh, by approximately 300 basis points and then increasing raw material sizing situation. Sorry, Sorry, Sorry absolutely could not understand. Yeah. Can you can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, my my question was about the gross margins. Uh, if we see quarter on quarter, our gross margin has increased by approximately 300 basis points. 
So just wanted to understand in an increasing pricing scenario, how have we managed to do that? Is what my question is. So see, basically what is happening is we the customers uh, we have a very good uh, pricing mechanism with the customers. So most of the key customers is where we are able to pass on prices quite uh, easily, and customers are also happily reciprocating by way of accepting these prices. And recently there is a scenario where we have approached a customer just in this current month of April, where certain prices have dropped, and we have approached a customer to reduce the prices accordingly. So it's a vice versa mechanism that works very well. So we are able to maintain our margins more or less in the trajectory what we are doing. And also the overall margins definitely get impacted because the SDAs, since this is the highest uh, margin or not among the, all the four categories. So with reduced SDAs, of course, our EBITDA percentages are dropping from quarter two to quarter three to quarter four. But uh, uh, overall, we are able to maintain, in the rest of the segments, we are able to maintain our pricing and margins comfortably. So I explained, you know, the, if you see on year-on-year -year basis, the increase in uh, revenue, uh, sorry, increase in the shipping cost, increase in the fuel cost, and increase in packaging cost has been quite significant. But this, we have been uh, comfortable in passing on these prices to the customers, and it has worked well so far. All right, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll get back on the queue. Thank you. The next question is from Vishal Baraya from Max Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, congratulations on a good set of numbers. So, uh, specifically on the margin side. So, my, my question is more uh, on the client side as to how we were trying to reduce the moisture content in the client. So, where have we reached? And uh, at what stage are we in terms of approvals from some of our clients for supply of this client? Thank you. Uh, so now in blinds, we are undergoing two stages of hydration, dehydration to achieve the required quality. So now we have decided that we go, go with this current ability to bring the product within the required specifications and start approaching customers for approval basis. But our eventual target still remains to achieve this dehydrated product with a single stage of verification, which we are working on. We are very close. We are now hitting in the range of about 30 to 35 ppm of moisture, but we need to go down to below 20 ppm. We are not too far, and we are working really hard in this area. But with two stages of dehydration, we are able to meet the customer specifications. And now we are deciding that let us first start uh, you know, getting into commercial approvals with these customers. And simultaneously in the backdrop, we continue to work uh, to achieve uh, the desired specifications using a single stage of dehydration. Okay. So just to understand this better, with the two stage of dehydration, you are able to meet the 20 uh, ppm uh, requirement. And with yes. Yes. currently you are doing it via two stages. So you need to get that from two stage to one stage. That is the issue. Exactly, because doing it two stage basically reduces my production capacity by 50%, or I have to install additional dehydration. So, and also any stage of purification, you typically lose about 4 to 5% uh, of product. Along with the water that is going out, you also tend to lose about 4 to 5% of your yields. So, eventually, your final target is to achieve these specifications using a single stage of Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, and how how big this market will be, Chintan, as to uh, this client market, the one that you will be targeting? So the potential customers with whom we are talking right now, the market is really big. I mean, the overall uh, demand for monoclines could be anywhere in the range of 15 to 18,000 metric tons. But the Customer switch we are focusing right now. Yeah, sorry, sorry about the phone call. So the customer base which we are trying to reach out for this EV, particular EV application, the customers with whom we are in touch, we can easily scale this up to our 3,000 to 4,000 metric tons of every now. Uh, so 3,000 tons you can supply is what you mean? We can supply. Yeah. 
So this will be three thousand tons of the eighteen thousand tons market globally. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So you will be basically taking market share, and so the market itself is expanding, not denying. But you would also be taking market share of some of the existing players. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then uh, uh, just to get the sense in terms of uh, the rupees crore terms of or million dollars terms of value of this eighteen thousand tons uh, of market, could you help me with that as well? Basically, it is roughly about the product, depending on the quality area where you are selling. It ranges between five to seven dollars a kg. Per. Oh, okay. Thank you. The next question is from Tanmay M from Mere Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, just uh, again a question on uh, SDAs. Uh, as you mentioned that uh, we'll be seeing a flattish uh, number in FY23, uh, but you also mentioned that you have added two customers. Uh, uh, the commercial agent, uh, commercial agent for, uh, for one customer will be starting from uh, Q2, and another will be starting from Jan23. But in spite of that, uh, you are guiding for a flattish uh, SDA growth. Uh, so, any reasons apart from the auto slowdown that uh, you are seeing in the legacy portfolio, or uh, if you could just specify that. Basically, we are going to see a quite low demand of SDAs in Q1 and slightly better demand in Q2. But this getting offset and coming to almost the same volume levels in Q3 and Q4 means very strong demand of SDAs in those two quarters. Right? And when we say a new customer introduction, typically it takes about a year to two when you the customer tests you in terms of your performance, consistency in your quality and in your logistic aspects. So this is basically an area where you gradually ramp up your confidence with the customer and that also in, in turn ends up with a ramp up of your volume showing up. So this is the same thing which happened with our three current large customers where we started with probably a very minor uh, volume of their overall demand. And now we are commanding nearly more than 50% of their demands. So this is happens over a period of two to three years where the customer confidence builds up and we start to get in more value volume. Sure, sir. But, uh, but again, just, yeah. the source is also an equally risky proposition, right? Because as I have always explained, you know, the application is so sensitive area. So, uh, and that is the reason why it is such a high entry barrier area. So, when the switch or the change or an addition of a new vendor is happening, or any kind of a change is happening, that is always done quite cautiously. So, the ramp up in terms of volume will happen periodically, year on year basis, where you start to get in the larger portion of the business. Sure, but sir, considering, I mean, uh, uh, Q3 and Q4 both being muted, don't you think, I mean, uh, on that base, uh, we can see some growth starting Q2 onwards? Uh, I mean, in spite of that, uh, we are... Uh, we already, for, the, for the first customer, we already have the orders on them. This uh, was expected to begin supplies from May of this year. And now customer has postponed the delivery to July of this year. This is all leading to, because of the semiconductor uncertainty, which is leading all these uh, you know, delays or postponements that are happening. For our largest customer also, the May schedule has been postponed to end of July schedule. So these kind of movements are currently happening, just purely because that the demand is very strong, but because of the further, uh, you know, the supply chain is disturbed at the upper end, which is causing, you know, uh, these delays or postponements of demand. Okay, okay. Because uh, I was just wondering, I mean, if the auto industry will start, you know, recovering, so we should see sort of a pent up demand for uh, our products as well. So that was the reason. Basically, basically, Ukraine is supplying a neon gas. So probably almost 70% of the neon gas which is required in the semiconductor production is coming out of Ukraine. So this war which has begun in this uh, January, uh, February area, so this has actually, you know, further 
dampen the availability of semiconductors. Otherwise, we were actually expecting this strong revival happening from this first quarter to happen. But again, we are seeing postponements, and this is purely becoming an output of the geopolitical issues that are currently going on. And uh, if I understand correctly, FY22 at uh, sorry FY23, then we will be seeing a slight uh, shift in the product mix. So any impact on the margins because of this? Uh, we should expect. We expect to maintain margins at the Q4 levels because see, overall the revenue is going to increase and FDA is going to remain stable. So theoretically speaking, we expect the Q4 margin levels over the overall. Sure, sir. Got. It. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from Dhruv Muchal from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so just to reconfirm, you mentioned Glime market is about 18,000 tons and we are targeting about 3,000 tons. Is that right? Right, sir. And the application, uh, I, I missed it, the application so, uh, from... Pilot, so once this piloting is done, the first phase we intend to only set up a continuous flow capacity with 3,000 metric tons. And currently, the customers where we are focusing, their demand is higher than that. But we understand that over a period of two to three years, we will be able to, you know, uh, take away almost 50% of their available uh, business. So this is why we are projecting 3,000 market tons. The actual available business with these existing, these potential customers is already much larger. But we understand that complete switch will never happen in this case. So we will just take a part of that business out. And so the application is in pharma or is it in uh, in, in uh, uh, electronics and others? No, so the pharma already we are catering. So pharma application we are already in the range of about thousand metric tons a year, uh, or slightly yeah. higher. But this is we specifically are targeting the EV segment. Okay. Because uh, sir, if I remember correctly, uh, the current line was to the conventional route that you, I believe, supplies to pharma. That is what and we are already doing. That is what we are already doing by the conventional synthesis. And now we will move this into the conventional the, synthesis. Okay. Where the conventional route does not work and uh, hence it only, for EV supplies only the conventional route, uh, uh, the, only the continuous route works. Is that fair? No. So basically the conventional route also works for the EV application, but uh, in production also you have to add one minor purification stage and then you have to go for dual stage of dehydration process to achieve that quality. So then theoretically, you know, your margins get eroded if you try to do all those things uh, and try to sell the product. It is better that we wait for the continuous flow process to actually commercially start supplying the EV application area. And the logical decision why we took that let us at least get into a cure, uh, into a cure approval because that itself is going to take you eight to nine months at least to get a formal approval in place. So for a time being, you can always do a dual stage of dehydration and extra purification to meet the quality. But eventually to make that business really a margin, uh, good margin business, then this will happen only when we go to a continuous flow chemistry activity. Got it. So the two stages that you're currently doing is using the conventional route and getting the product approved and yes. once that because uh, producing by conventional yeah. route itself has a larger raw material uh, usage. So that is one disadvantage and then you have to undergo an additional verification stage at the process point. And also you have to do dual dehydration process. So that is also an additional cost. Then you are left with very low margins to sell the product. But this you can do it for next eight to nine months, but eventually you need to move to a continuous flow application. Sure, sir. And so what is the application, specific application in EV of this line? So basically it is goes as a mix. So typically the electrolyte salts, let us say LIPF6. So LIPF6 is a solid which typically is dissolved into a combination of solvents. So the most prominently used is the dimethyl carbonate. But then with dimethyl carbonate, they, they also add few other solvents. So monoglyme is one of those solvents used as a mixed combination with dimethyl carbonate or other solvents to dissolve the electrolyte salts. So this actually becomes a part of the heart of the Li battery. So this becomes the part of the electrolyte solution within the Li battery. 
Okay. So this market is already supplied by someone, and uh, uh, we are developing an, uh, our own individual independent process to uh, make this and uh, seek uh, and capture this market. Correct. Correct. Sure, sir. Uh, so the second thing was uh, uh, the uh, flame retardant uh, product that you mentioned. So is is there any uh, you know interlink between in the existing product that we do, or probably the customers, or uh, uh, probably the RMs that we have that uh, this this uh, uh, on the flame retardant? Uh, I mean, is there some integration benefit that we are uh, leveraging on? Typically, one of our very large customers of uh, so we are basically supplying a catalyst for epoxidation to a multinational customer, and these people are into manufacturing. So my catalyst is being used to manufacture the raw material for the flame retardant. So the catalyst what we are supplying is actually utilized in manufacturing of the flame retardant raw material. So this is how we became aware of this business and we started talking to the customer. So customer is also wanting a forward integration of what they are making. So this forward integration is what we will do for them. One of their potential customers. So this is how this segment has evolved. So we have been working on this since last three, four years and now uh, the things have materialized. And there's reasonable confidence, at least based on your comments, that uh, the June commercialization will be done. And but, so how is the production approval process? Because again, here it's the uh, electronic application where, I, I mean, I think the semiconductor kind of thing where application, the approval processes are generally very long. So how do you think about the approval process? Is it the same auto cycle where it takes about, five years? This would take about four to five months at least uh, from June to get a formal approval in place. Uh, and this would be a good timing to launch it in June, so that by November, when you have a real plant availability for making these products by that time, you are ready for the application uh, with the approvals from the customers. So June logically is the best time for us to launch this product, so that by November, when you have most of the application uh, approvals in place, then you can really run up the production. I mean, I was wondering from the final approval time. For example, for SDAs, it takes a lot, very long time given the application is very specific. So this, basically, uh, just to give you an idea, this product uh, typically a customer would consume uh, something in few thousand metric tons a year. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so the last three or four customers, each of them would be consuming at least few thousand metric tons of this product. So for getting into a commercial approval process would also require them to buy few loads of this product, few containers of this product running into a couple of hundred metric tons to go, go into final uh, approval stage. So, and this is what we will be able to make from June to November. Okay. Right? So any customer demanding 50 or 80 metric tons for approval process and this is max what we can actually produce from our plant, current plant. So this is the reason why we are, you know, going with not waiting till November. Otherwise, it will again take you another five or six months to start. Sure, sir. Got it. That's very helpful. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Archit Joshi from Dalat Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, a few bits uh, more on the flame retardant side. Uh, I understand that this is a category of some halogenated uh, products and derivatives yes. uh, and largely on the bromination side. Uh, so just wanted to understand uh, our technical expertise uh, also knowing the fact that there are some very large multinationals who uh, have integration benefits also like Albamal uh, on the bromination side. So how are we looking at uh, this uh, other than what you mentioned earlier uh, that you know we have forward integrated from our catalyst only to eventually manufacture flame retardants. Other than that, have we identified certain supply demand gaps? And other than that, if you can also some, throw some light on uh, the technical expertise or the know-how that we have in Bromination. Thank you. So there is, see, basically what has happened is a couple of years back, China went into a regulation where in certain cases, uh, usage of flame retardants had been made mandatory. So this has pushed up the demand of flame retardants drastically. And this has caused the severe gap in demand supply. Right? So this is the reason why we find a good opportunity in getting into this. Secondly, uh, there are three large players globally in this area. Lanxess, Albalmal, and uh, ICL. 
now the key position where and they of course will have their own significant benefits in uh, because of their backward integration into the raw materials as well the where we bring in value is to offer a consistent high purity of products where the customers are still struggling to get it so this again we are talking of impurity pro profiles of certain metal elements into this product being into low ppm levels so similar to our uh, sda applications where we are producing substances with very low trace metal impurities the same is the application where we are trying to position ourselves with the flame rate products and that uh, you know within the bromine category this is by volumes one of the largest uh, application areas uh, so anything on the yes. supply supply chain side as to how we are going to procure bromine and so we are working with a couple of large bromine suppliers in india as well as one internationally where we right. intend to have a tie up with them some kind of a tie up in terms of uh, supply agreements consistency and also in uh, you know getting a consistent because bromine itself is in a shortage since last few years yeah exactly yeah supply situation with bromine itself is in a short supply and this is the reason why you need to have a good tie up with uh, a couple of bromine producers and that is what we are currently working on right sir uh, so one last bit uh, i think we mentioned that uh, it's a 3 billion dollar market and out of which we are you know targeting a uh, very niche application within electricals and electronics so uh, just some broad numbers i mean how big would this market be uh, you know specifically pertaining to uh, any numbers on uh, that so again big this market is also again quite large so running into a billion dollar plus uh, market segment and we just need a small pie out Actually, okay. because this uh, our existing new capex will only entail us to produce somewhere in the range between four to five thousand metric tons a year. So this typically product cost between six to eight or nine uh, dollars, and this is just the beginning flame retardant. What we are so so like in phase transfer that is how we have a large basket of product. Flame right. retardants the commonly used flame retardant is the entry level product. and then you have other complicated products other high end chemistries to be involved to further uh, as advanced stage of flame intermediate uh, flame retardant and that is the key area where we will eventually focus thank you the next question is from vishal baraya from max life insurance please go ahead Yeah, so my question is again on the gross margin side. Is there any of the segments that show that show a very sharp improvement in margins or any you know, sharp, imp uh, I mean, uh, decline in raw material costs or anything of that sort, which helped the improve sequential improvement in gross margins? No, no, not not really uh, any major impact. It's just the changing product mix or an independent product that being sold slightly higher than something else is causing this one or two percent of the. But broadly speaking, uh, there is no question of any kind of reduction in price or in uh, uh, relation to cost because everything has increased, right? But we are fortunate enough that customers are agreeing to accept the increased pricing, and we are able to pass on those prices. But more or less speaking, there is no change in individual product in terms of price uh, margins. Okay, and uh, the freight scenario has it improved? Uh, over the, uh, the last uh, few months. Sorry, what scenario? Uh, freight with uh, logistics because we are seeing some no, of no, no. uh, the freight scenario has gone from bad to worse actually during the last quarter, and it continues to remain at the worst level. It is good that it is not going from worse to worse. So okay. Okay. it is still at uh, those levels uh, where freight cost is still not coming down. Fortunately, since last couple of weeks, availability of uh, containers has kind of slightly improved, but still the destination port congestion is a big issue that we are facing. So we have lot of containers in transit, and probably today we have four containers very close to Rotterdam port. Since last 30 days, but not being delivered on the Rotterdam port, and customer is also buying out with lot of products. So that is the actual scenario that is happening 
in terms of logistics. So from here you are able to ship the product probably on time, but then it is not being delivered to the customer on time. That is the key issue right there today. Okay. Okay, and uh, so last question is on the raw material side, the TBAB and uh, the other key raw materials that we use. So, and a lot of it is imported. So, do we have some contracts in with these players where they have also not been able to increase the prices with us, and we have got the raw material at the at, at the lower prices, and which may have a reset in the coming few quarters. Typically, the way we are working on most of the large products is where we do a quarterly contract and for the raw materials and also revise the pricing with the customers on a quarterly basis. So this works in the best way for even my suppliers and also for my customers. So you know, and this is the key reason why we are able to sustain these margins for a such a turbulent year and still we could absorb the increase in price from the suppliers and also pass on the increased price to the customers. So that has worked well for the whole supply chain for us. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So thank you very much. This is all. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we take the last question from the line of Nilesh Ji from HDFC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on the electrolyte uh, salts. Uh, as you mentioned that uh, these electrolyte salts, you have uh, the chemistry and technology available with you and uh, you are currently manufacturing those electrolyte sites. Is my understanding correct? Correct, sir. Yeah. And sir, uh, uh, for particular electrolyte, uh, there is a specific electrode that uh, one can have, right? Or is it like that you can have the electrolyte for across lithium based any electrolyte? Is it the one on one combination between electrode and electrolyte or one to many relation between electrode and electrolyte? Just a clarification from your side, sir. You see, basically, Nilesi, we are not into the electrolytes for lithium battery. We are into electrolytes for the supercapacitor batteries and the energy storage batteries. So typically when you say energy storage batteries, these are uh, again lithium-based batteries or non-lithium-based batteries. So people talk about sodium-based batteries or zinc-based electrolyte batteries. So we are nowhere into the lithium-based uh, side of the battery application. But typically just to answer your question correctly, so people, uh, each company would have its own proprietary combination of electrolyte salts and also its own proprietary mix of solvents or additives that they use to dissolve the salts and make a unique electrolyte formulation. So these are all guarded and patented uh, technologies where each company will have to come up with its own uh, formulation of the electrolyte which has to be different compared to its competitor. So depending on which electrodes you are using, your electrolyte could change. Or keeping the same electrode again, still your electrolyte will be different from your competitor. Okay, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Sorry, go ahead. This is Chintan here. Uh, on behalf of the management, I thank you everyone for participating in this earnings call and for your continued support. We have tried to address all your queries. However, if we have missed out on any of your questions, please feel free to reach out to Mr. Ashok Bosa, our CFO, or our IR advisor, ENY, and we will connect with you offline. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Investor Capital Services, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.